Happy Centennial Plus Two Versary of Crisco being released to the American public, everybody. My name is Starchy Fox, but you can call me Starchy. And today, oh, what's this? Oh, poor Kirby, he fell down a hole. Kirby doesn't get much respect in these little cutscenes, does he? He's always getting hurt or tugged around by something. But that's the plot of this game, the Great Cave Offensive. One of my favorite, if not my absolute favorites, in the entire Kirby Superstar package. Now this one is a little bit different. As suggested on this screen, we are here for treasures. That's right, we're not here to stop King DDD or defeat a giant bird and make it into soup, or even just to stuff our faces. We're here for self-gain and greed. Oh, I can get behind that. <laughs> So starting off here, in the first upper area of the Great Cave, which shall otherwise remain nameless, we have an area that is suggested by the name of the song that's playing right here. But before that, we can get our very first treasure, the gold medal. Now, note the value here. It's in G, or gold pieces, so apparently we're in Dragon Quest world. But the name of the song that's playing right here is, um... What is it? Trees growing in the depths of the earth. Very evocative, that. I um, feel it has a very um, Jules Verne sort of feel to it. Lost World, even. Which is very appropriate for this type of setting. But it's also really where I feel the soundtrack truly begins to shine. I haven't talked about this thus far, but um, video game music is really one of my passions. And I spend a lot of time thinking about different composers, their own styles. I play a bit of music on, of my own. And in my personal opinion, Jun Ishikawa, who did this soundtrack with sound design being done by uh, Dan Miyagawa, is one of the best, if not one of the absolute best, chiptune artists of all time. Even more so than Tim Follin, and for those who actually know a lot about game music that might be considered sacrilege, but I truly feel that it's the honest truth. Now, I'm not talking about the game very much, and I apologize for that, but oh, shoot. Uh, the object of the Great Cave Offensive is to collect 60 treasures that are littered throughout the cave, and if I had a helper, if I had a second player here, I mean, I could do this a bit more easily. <coughs> I will be attempting to get every single one of them. Um, the wing ability helps out immensely in this bit due to the um, additional lateral motion that it grants to Kirby. But we're making fairly good progress here in a fairly rapid clip. We've already got four of the treasures and I will be reviewing them in time because a lot of these actually are references to other game series or uh, Nintendo franchises or even just uh, Japanese culture. Some of them are quite interesting, and I've not seen other people really touch on some of the aspects, so I will try to cover them in time. Maybe not all at once. But this is a first treasure that I feel is somewhat interesting. The Lucky Cat. One sees a lot of these sorts of uh, statues throughout Japan. Um, I believe it's based on a folk tale that a um, cat warned an emperor off of an enemy's trap of some sort. This is just a way back. Um, by holding up its paw, warning the Emperor in some fashion. Uh, my memory is fuzzy on this one. But, also be warned through this point. It is very possible to miss treasures, permanently so. If, say, if this block in the middle here were to break, and that treasure were to fall in the lava, one could not get it on this playthrough. So, that's a hazard that I'm going to have to be very careful of here. <clears throat> oh, no, don't hit me, Bonto Bird. I don't like you. I'm sorry, but you're a bully. Ah, here's another one I wanted to talk about. The Seiryu Sword. Now, from what I can gather through just Google, basically, <clears throat> this name corresponds to... Oh dear, I can't get it with the wing ability here. Corresponds to a particular Chinese constellation that's associated with blue dragon. I believe that might even be what it means. That is particularly associated with springtime. And that's actually not a throwaway detail either. 
That will become important here in a bit. Let me get the, this with the beam whip. But yeah, we'll keep that in mind for later. Here we have the screwball, obviously a uh, reference to Metroid, so we have potentially two um, treasures that are already allusions to other game series. Um, I'll just point out the other one here. The um, whip, because I believe at this point in Nintendo's history, uh, the whip would have referred to Simon Belmont, or the uh, vampire killer, because Castlevania was um, still mainly a Nintendo-associated series, even though it was third party. Ah, the Echigo candy. Now that one, I haven't seen anyone else talk about, mainly because it's quite obscure, but um, Echigo, from what I can tell, and maybe I should save this while we go heal up in the save cabin here. Um, but, quick digression. Throughout the Great Cave, there will be these little cabins with this um, rather iconic tune playing. That's actually an arrangement of green greens. One can get a Maxim Tomato and um, save progress. I'm not going to save quite yet, just in case this recording doesn't go so well. But Echiko actually refers to the ancient name of a province in Japan located in the north of the country. I believe the um, ancient provincial boundaries don't correspond to any modern day um, boundaries, so I won't give the modern day equivalent. But I believe that area was actually rather well known for, or is rather well known, for production of glutinous rice which is commonly used in confectionery such as um, mochi and also some of the rice candies that are sold in um, Asian markets and rice paper. So this might well refer to just glutinous rice candy, which I think is rather interesting. I'm, I'm fond of that myself. Had it once or twice. The zebra mask. I'm not entirely certain, but I think this might be a reference to Super Mario Bros. 2, the original um, um, Doki Doki Panic version on the um, Famicom disc system. But let me see, have we forgotten any treasures? No, I think we're fine up to this point. So let's move on to the next area of the cave here. Um, need to be a bit careful here. I'm going to ensure that I don't screw this up because I believe. Yes, yes, we do. Hello, Bonkers, for the fourth time. I believe, no oh shoot, I believe his power will be necessary at some point in the near future. I have um, not played the Great Cave Offensive for quite some time and I don't want you to roll off the edge. Please don't. Don't kill me either. Just throw your coconuts. Do your thing. Oh no, 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 oh. Blah. Well, hopefully that wasn't necessary. Let's just um, hope for the best. I don't remember very well. Oh, hello. This is something I haven't showed off before. If one absorbs two powers simultaneously, one will um, get a roulette wheel here that will assign Kirby a random ability. Ah, bombs. I don't believe one can get bomb at this point in the game normally. So this may prove somewhat useful. Here we go. Chicken! And so uh, That's not such a nice supper. I'm not really fond of supper or, um, sodas. The Star Stone. Um, I haven't been able to find if this is a reference to any particular Nintendo series or not. If anyone has any information on that, I'd appreciate um, being pointed towards a definitive answer, though. Uh, down here, there's another treasure being guarded by uh, two very fast moving Gordos, so be careful. And the Beast's Fang. Again, not quite certain that's a reference to anything or not. I haven't been able to find anything definitive as for the um, candy. But <clears throat> I started to um, talk a little bit about Jun Ishikawa and his work on this soundtrack. I have admired his work for some time now, not only for the Kirby series, but also for some of his other work. Um, he did... Actually, I think I need Sir Kibble. He did a um, Ghostbusters title on the NES that along with his work on Kirby's Adventure really demonstrated to me that he absolutely knew the hardware inside and out. 
and that really has carried forward into this game because this is the, this song, Trees in the Depths of the Earth, is absolutely phenomenal for what it accomplishes in terms of tone. It um really gives one a sense of exploration here. And I should note, be very careful going through here. Um, one needs this cutter ability towards the end of this area, but there are tocks falling through from the sky here that will take it from you. It's um, not critical, but it is an inconvenience. And we got a bandana. Again, I don't think that's a reference to anything, but be nice to know. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, I'm fine. Goodbye, Poppy Brothers Jr. <laughs> I didn't really like you that much anyway. Now remember when I said that um, the Seryu sword was associated with um, a blue dragon that was associated with springtime? Well, how about that? There are four areas to this cave, each of which has a um, heart that's associated with the seasons there. Summertime, autumn time, winter time, and here, springtime. Springtime for trees in the depths of the earth. I think it works. And we've got a few other ability pedestals here. But this seems rather portentous. Nice tomato. Along with some ability pedestals. Now, I could show off this. Which is the jet ability. Which is unique to this game. I think we saw Mira very briefly. But I think I see something I like. It's a kitchen knife! I like my kitchen knife. It draws out things like that. <laughs> Let's just move on here to... Ooh, what's this? I think this is... Yes, it is! It's a boss! It's a fatty whale! Perfect for using our new kitchen knife on! You get over here. I should rather like to try a fatty whale at some point. I've heard it is um somewhat like beef in character. And whale blubber itself, I feel, would probably be a be the most excellent cooking fat. Oh, no, 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 no. Give me that. I'm very fond of the saturated fats in cooking myself. Beef tallow, coconut oil, um, good lard, butter. And I'm not talking about this boss at all. I'm just uh, pontificating on fats at this point. So let me apologize. Fatty Whale has a few different attacks. He most mainly will uh, travel across the screen in some fashion and release uh, great gouts of water, flood the screen, sending you upward and causing rocks to hail down. Uh, the rocks will give the stone ability, which I generally try to avoid when I'm playing through, just because it grants a little too much invulnerability, makes the game too easy. But, let us do away with him. Oh, no, 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 come back, come back. I just want to eat you. Spoil sport. And let's move on here. Into this door, and... Now that is music I like. This is an arrangement from a, of a particular tune from Kirby's Adventure, and this really, really shows that Mr. Ishikawa is a fantastic arranger. Even of his own work. I adore this soundtrack. Beyond Gourmet Race, uh, the Gourmet Race tune, which is actually called Run Kirby Run. I meant to mention that in the last video. Uh, this soundtrack has so much love given to it, and through here you can see even more so what I mean. This arrangement of the Green Greens um, motif. We're here in the second part of the Great Cave now. The Crystal Fields, as I've called them in the past. <clears throat> this is such a heroic sounding song. And now we get... A dime. I feel cheated. <laughs> Never worry, though. There's another one down here that will more than make up for it, I think. Yes! We stole Cinderella's glass slippers! That's worth several dimes. Sorry, just listening to the music. I love it. I love it. I love it. Alright. 
Now we've gotten here to a second save cabin, and I think this will be an appropriate place to cut this video. I don't want the great cave to drag on too much, so I'll break it into um, digestible chunks. Let's just get an onion tomato. Tasty. Save our record, and I will leave off there for now. Have a very good evening, and go enjoy some hydrogenated vegetable shortening. Starchy Fox, saying... Adieu.